runs to find the limit of the sequence given by a sub n. Looking at the theorem below, if a sub n equals the function f of n, if the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals l, then a sub n converges to l, and the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals l. So this theorem is telling us we determine the limit of a sequence the same way we determine the limit at infinity of a function. Instead of formally defining a function f of x, where f of n equals a sub n, we often just use the formula for a sub n for a function of n, which means we can determine the limit of the sequence by determining the limit as n approaches infinity of the quantity 2n cubed minus 5 divided by 50n squared. Now there are several ways to determine this limit. We'll look at two ways. One way using the general guideline for determining limits at infinity of rational functions, and then also a shortcut method. The general guideline for determining limits at infinity of rational functions is to step one, divide each term in the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x in the denominator, or in our case, the highest power of n in the denominator, and then we find the limit at infinity in the new form. So because the highest power of n in the denominator is n squared, we'll divide each term by n squared, which will give us the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n cubed divided by n squared minus 5 divided by n squared all over 50n squared divided by n squared. Again, notice how we divided each term by the highest power of n from the denominator. And now we simplify each fraction, so we have the limit as n approaches infinity of, well, 2n cubed divided by n squared would simplify to 2n, because n cubed divided by n squared simplifies to just n to the first over one. Five over n squared does not simplify, and 50n squared divided by n squared simplifies to just 50. So now we have the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n minus five divided by n squared divided by 50. Well, notice 50 is not affected by n. The fraction five over n squared approaches zero as n approaches infinity because the numerator is a constant and because the denominator has two factors of n as n approaches infinity, the denominator increases without bound and therefore the fraction approaches zero. But the term 2n is going to approach positive infinity as n approaches infinity. So because the numerator is increasing without bound, this limit is approaching positive infinity, which does not exist. So because this limit does not exist, this tells us the sequence a sub n diverges. Because the limit is approaching positive infinity, this also tells us that when we find more and more terms in the sequence using this formula, the terms are going to get larger and larger and increase without bound. Before we look at this graphically though, let's also determine this limit using a second method, the shortcut method. So starting with the original limit again, we have the limit as n approaches infinity of again the quantity 2n cubed minus 5 divided by 50n squared. The shortcut method involves looking at the degree of the numerator and denominator. Notice how the numerator has degree 3 the denominator has degree two. So looking at the shortcut method, our limit is case three, where the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. When this is the case, the limit of the rational function does not exist. If the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, the limit of the rational function is zero. And if the degrees are equal, the limit is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients. But in our case, because the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, this tells us the numerator is increasing faster than the denominator, and therefore the limit does not exist, and a sub n diverges. Using the shortcut method, we would have to look at the leading coefficients in the numerator and denominator to determine whether it approaches positive or negative infinity. Notice how both leading coefficients are positive, and because n is approaching positive infinity, this limit would approach positive infinity. Before we go, let's look at the graph of the sequence. Here's the graph of a sub n, where n is along the horizontal axis, and a sub n is along the vertical axis. Notice, as we generate more and more terms in the sequence, the terms increase without bound, 
which is the reason why the limit approached positive infinity and we say a sub n diverges. I hope you found this helpful.